This is a uh, brief tutorial on how to take a standard picture and turn it into sort of a Warner Brothers style logo using Photoshop Elements 8. We're going to get started using a stock picture that we've taken against a white screen in this case. Green screen will also do. I'm going to get started using the crop tool and the first thing I'm going to do is size it down into an appropriate size. So using the crop tool I've put in a width of 500 pixels and 500 pixels and the resolution is 72 dots per inch and I'll pull a crop out of this thing that might just do the job and I'll try to be a little generous around the shoulders and stuff. Double, uh, double click it or hit the check mark double click the hand tool and you can see the initial picture that you're starting with. Next trick we would like to pop the foreground subject to its own layer so the, the head is going to get popped to its own uh, layer using the magic wand tool in this case. The magic wand tool will select any color we click on given a tolerance of 20 leaving anti-alias and contiguous on and sample all layers off I can click in the background and very quickly select just the back background part but again what we want to do is select the foreground so I can do that by inverting select inverse and now I've got the foreground subject and to get that subject into his own layer control J now we've got ourselves a layer that I'm gonna call head next trick we would like to paint a new background this background we don't want to destroy it's nice to have it uh, non-destructive we have the reference that's back there but to paint in a new background easy I'll click on the foreground color choose a nice red color and the background color I'll choose a nice dark red color and in between I'll use a gradient so foreground is light red background dark red a gradient radial and in layer one right about where the eyes are I'll pull that in to give this as a nice uh, nice rich background and I'll double click this and I'll call this new background close enough there's a real fringe that shows up especially against darker backgrounds so the next thing we'll do is we're gonna defringe this thing a little bit to defringe it I'm gonna go to the head layer I am going to control click the little icon in the head layer and when you control click a layer it selects the opaque pixels in that layer the ones that aren't transparent now that I've selected that I'm going to flip it, select, inverse, and then I'm going to feather it, select, feather, and I'm going to use a radius of 1. A feather is just blurring that border, and now when I hit the delete key, it's going to start eating away at the outside fringe of this thing. I'm going to control H to hide the selection. It's still there, but when I control H, you can see the effect a little better. When I hit delete once, twice, three times, you know, maybe maybe three times is enough. After a while it starts to erode and makes it look a little too soft. Control H shows you the selection. Control D deselects. And if you want to fine tune it, you can use an eraser tool to try to get rid of anything that looks like it's a little bit too fringy because you've got some flaky white stuff happening up here. Okay. Pretty easily controlled. Just like that. Double click the hand tool. Back in business. So now we're about time to uh, make a ring for this thing so I'm going to make a new layer for the ring and I'm going to click on the marquee tool and choose an elliptical marquee holding the shift key down I can make a perfect circle around the subject and I want to make that circle just slightly smaller than the window it's in I now want to choose a nice color for the ring and I'm going to choose something in the blue family something about there ought to do and in layer one if I use alt delete it fills in the foreground color inside of whatever I have selected so I've got a nice big circle over top now to punch out the hole of the donut I'll use select I'll use modify and contract and I'll contract it by 50 pixels it gets a little rough in the contraction so I'll smooth it out with a select modify smooth 50 pixels ought to do and hitting delete pops a hole in the middle of it so now we got the ring for the Warner Brothers thing Control D to deselect. Next thing I might want to do is add a little bevel to that ring. So layer one, first of all, I'm going to call it ring. And with level layer one selected, you can do all sorts of cool things to layers by going to layer, layer style, style settings. And I'm going to activate the bevel and adjust the size of it a little bit so it makes it look like it's a little bit more of an inflated balloon. Okay. Now, next we'd like to pop the head over top of the ring so it looks like it's coming through it a little bit better. 
And that's pretty easy to do too. I'm going to go back and choose my rectangular marquee tool and go back to the head layer. And I'll just select the top of the head here. That ought to do the job. Control J when I'm on that layer will chop off a little, a little part of the head and I can drag that on top of the ring layer to make it look like the head's popping through the ring. And I'll give this a name like head fix. Now, it seems like there's a little bit of fringing that could take place here, but I won't worry about that for now. That could go back. You go back and fix that anytime. Next thing I might want to do though is add one more thing, and I think this is going to complete it. I would like to mask out the area around the outside of that circle, and that's really easy to do. I'll use the magic wand tool one more time. I'll click on the ring layer and select the outside area of the ring and then go back to the mask layer. Now I'm going to go back to my default colors. I can hit the D key or click on that little icon there and that gives me black and white and to fill in the background color I will use on the mask layer control delete fills in the mask and at this point in time you're pretty much done. It's nice and smooth, looks great. There's one little added trick I might put to this. I could put a little drop shadow behind that, um, behind the, the head, just on the ring layer. Here's an easy way to do that. If I control click the ring layer, just like that, and while I'm on the mask layer, I'm going to add one more layer in between. I'm going to use a paintbrush, this ought to do the job, and paint in just a little bit of black. Choose a nice soft brush for this too little bit of black over here to make it look like oh actually this layer has to be on top of the ring let's put it up there oh too much but I can move this thing around pretty easily too I'll take the opacity of it down a little bit and then maybe what I'll do for that bit here I'm going to deselect and move that shadow layer down a little bit and just creates a little bit better illusion that there's some sort of depth taking place here Nice. We'll leave it at that. You can now file, save for web, and post the finished product onto your web-based portfolio. Congratulations.